In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the all new Mamba F405 Mini Mark III. Now, we're going to be covering quite a lot today and also a beginner setup guide and a new format of recording that I've done or editing, I should say. So there will be a timetable down below and also you can check it out in the video progress bar. So you can go ahead and skip to whatever part you want. So in the first part, we're just going to discuss some of its features here and also take a look at what they do provide in the packaging and talk a little bit about Diatone. Now, Diatone is a really, really great company. It's basically high quality components for budget prices which is pretty insane most of their stuff is reliable i have it in a couple of my favorite quadcopters and still running rock solid till this day and a lot of people would agree with me some won't but most definitely will and you can check the comments down below for other people's remarks so let's talk about some of the specs here so this takes an input voltage 3 to 6 s so it's very very universal and it's very compatible with a lot of things however i highly recommend you get the stack because just the connecting the esc is going to be much much easier with this connector and especially if you're new so i definitely recommend you get this full stack which i'll have linked down below now some of the specs here we have osd 16 megabytes of flash memory mpu 6000 gyro 3.3 volt regulator 5 volt regulator is the max which is rated up to 3 amps and the 5 volt is the switching regulator which is going to be right here and i really love seeing this right here this is a tvs diode or transient voltage suppression diode which allows it to basically cut unwanted very bad voltage spikes into the flight controller which is really nice touch. Not a lot of flight controllers do that. I think the first person to implement it was Maytek. And Maytek is just proper stuff. So is Mamba here. Mamba has been proving itself very reliable lately. So huge plus there. Now let's take a look at some of the things they do provide in the packaging here. So they give you 10 rubber grommets, some stiffer than others. I think the purple ones are slightly stiffer than the uh, blue ones here. So once you place in these little rubber grommets here, it'll transform the hole into a two millimeter sized hole. However, and again, this is a 20 by 20. It's a mini flight controller. So you'll be able to set this up on any 20 by 20. And I actually have one of these set up on one of my favorite quadcopters. And it's still just an absolute beast, whether it's an F7 or an F4. And then I highly recommend you also pick up the complete stack. Don't buy a separate ESC for this. Just get the one that it's supposed to uh, go with because it just makes your life so much easier. And as you can tell, look how easy it is to put these rubber grommets in other flight controllers. It's an absolute nightmare. So the attention to detail here is quite remarkable. So other than the rubber grommets, we also get a connector. So this is meant for their normal standard ESC that comes with the stack. So if you purchase any Mamba ESC, you'll be able to connect it directly with this. And this wire right here would be set up for any other 4-in-1 ESC or ESC you would be setting up with this. So you'll be able to do that. So it's really nice to provide that. And these are silicone. However, I do really wish they were color uh, coded, not all white, but I guess what can we do here? And they also give you a really nice uh, capacitor. I don't know if this is a low ESR capacitor, but this will basically go into your main power rails, which will be which would be your VCC and BAT, which would be these two here. So if you didn't know which one's the negative side, this would be the negative side where the blue line is, and the other one would go to the positive. So ground and positive. Blue is ground, but the other one's going to be positive here. So let's go ahead and jump into the connection guide now. So now we're going to go ahead and cover how we would go about connecting our FPV camera. Now for every FPV camera, it's really the same thing. We have three main wires here, VCC, ground, and video. Those are the most important wires of any camera that needs to be connected into your flight controller. And you might be wondering, why do we connect them into our flight control? Well, I'll explain why in a bit here, but it's very important you follow along here. Now, for the VCC, it's going to be 5 volts. Now, I highly recommend you always give a camera 5 volts. And this is our 5 volt pad right here on this uh, flight controller here. And the reason why I recommend you give it 5 volts, even though some cameras take much, much more, it's because there is not a lot of filtration on the FPV camera. And if you give it battery voltage, then you have a higher probability of getting lines in your video feed, which is called noise. And that could really hinder your flying performance and just the whole experience. So, so just try to always run your FPV cameras on a 5 volt power rail. So the next wire is going to be ground. Ground is just basically for power. So we have our 5 volt and power. And this is our ground wire right here for our camera. So right there we have 5 volts and ground. So now the camera gets full power. So the next thing we need is the video line. Now the video line usually is called v VI or CAM. It depends on the flight controller. And this one's called CAM. And it's going to be this one right here. And very simple, we just go ahead and connect that right there. Now, the reason why we connect our video line into our flight controller is because inside the flight controller, there's a trace that goes all the way like this. 
and it goes into this thing right here. This is the OSD chip, and what this does is it overlays your video feed with very useful information, such as your battery voltage, how much current you've drawn, how much current you're drawing, how long you've been flying for, so you have a rough estimate of when to land so you don't just have your quadcopter fall out of the sky, ruin your battery, or even lose your quadcopter. So it overlays a lot of useful information. Also, if you have GPS, it'll give you all kinds of crazy information. And that is the reason why we route our cameras through our flight controller. So once this processes the image, then it just pipes it back out to the VTX, which gives it down to our goggles with all that information. And thus the reason why we install our video feed of our camera into our flight controller. Now, as you can tell here, we have one more wire. Not all cameras have this, but this is the OSD wire. And what that allow you to do is basically control the settings of the camera, exposure, contrast, color, whatever it might be the settings that the camera has. And usually those go to a C, C pad or a cam control pad. However, on this flight controller, we don't have that. So we can completely ignore that. And we can just use the OSD remote that they provide you in the packaging to do that stuff. However, I never really play around with the settings of the camera. I usually just leave it default. But if you wanted to, uh, this flight controller doesn't have that option. So all you have to worry about are basically just those three wires, which are VCC, ground, and video. And like that, we're completely done with our FPV camera, and you should be good to go. So let's go ahead and move on to the video transmitter part. Now in this part of the video, we're gonna be covering the video transmitter connection. Now the first thing you wanna know, or the first thing you wanna make sure of, is what is the input voltage for your video transmitter? And usually it tells you it's either seven volts and above, anything above seven volts, or a five volt only. So it's very important to know this or else you'll fry the video transmitter. We're gonna cover both in this video. So let's first start off with the seven volt plus, which is, I call these battery voltage video transmitter. So if you have a seven volt plus or battery voltage video transmitter, what you wanna look for is anything above five volts. So you wanna look for a nine volt regulator, 10, 12, 14, whatever it might be. However, on this flight controller, the only thing we have is this pad right here, which is VCC. And VCC is basically the battery voltage, the raw battery voltage. And that's where we're gonna wanna connect our red wire here for this video transmitter, since it's a seven plus volts. Now, if your video transmitter was five volts only, then this is the pad where you wanna take it from. So right there, let's go ahead and set that up. So five volts, and this is seven volts plus so anything above seven volts is going to go to this pad and anything that's five volt any five volt video transmitter is going to go here so that would cover our red wire let me go ahead and clean this up so we do the rest of the connection here all right so the next thing we want to look for is a ground pad so we give power to the video transmitter now whether you're a seven plus volt or a five volt this is the pad where you're going to want to connect the ground here so let's just go ahead and set that up just like that. So now we have power for our video transmitter and you're basically almost done. We have two more wires, but we can only just concentrate on one wire, which is the most important wire, which is the video wire, which is gonna be the yellow line here. Now the place where you wanna connect this video line is going to be right there. And we're just gonna route that here and we will have to cross over, sorry about that. And that's gonna go right there. So that's where our video line is gonna go. And again, the reason why we do this is because the camera was coming in from here, it goes into this chip right here, and then this processes the information, puts it on the image, and it'll bring it back out to our video transmitter, which then outputs it back to our goggles here. And that is the reason why we connect our FPV camera and our video transmitter into the flight controller, because of this chip right here, the OSD, the on-screen display is very, very important. All right, so now the last thing here is going to be something called Smart Audio IRC Tram Protocol. Now, if you don't know what this what this is, you could ignore it for now, you come back to it later. But if you're gonna be setting up Smart Audio, this is where you're gonna be setting it up, which is Smart Audio or IRC Tram, and this is going to be a TX3 pad. So this is gonna be a TX3 pad, so UART3 will be the one in charge of your video transmitters protocol. If you don't know what that is, search it, you might find a couple videos, I also do have videos on there, but that's where you wanna connect your smart audio protocol or IRC tramp. It's meant to be set up in this area here, and it's really thoughtful of Diatone to give us a VCC pad here for the seven plus volt video transmitters that we might be using here. So this is really nice to see here. And another little nice touch is these right here. This basically tells you if the five volt regulator is on or off, 3.3 volts, and if you have power, main power into the board here. So you kind of debug this area. 
uh, if you have an issue here. For example, if you plug in the USB and there's no five volts going on in this board, usually they don't, uh, then this won't be on. So you'll know that once you plug in the USB, there's no five volt and you'd have to give it power basically through a battery or something, then you'll see this light up. So it's really nice that they give these little status icons. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump to the receiver part. All right, so in this part, we're gonna cover both iBus and SBus. Now it's gonna be very simple because the only difference is just the signal wire. So basically they both take five volts in ground and the five volt in ground for both iBus and SBus will go in the same exact position that I'm going to show you. The only difference is going to be the signal wire, which is either the SBus or the iBus. So let's go ahead and start with the ground. So the ground, I would highly recommend you set up right here because this is the way that the routing has been made for everything you need because the signal is going to go here for SBus. So that's why I recommend you set up the ground right there. 5 volt here, we'll set up the 5 volts. Now and again, iBus or SBus, this is how you'd give it power. It doesn't matter if you're using the FlySky receivers or the FRSky receivers. This is where you want to give them 5 volts in ground. The red is the 5 volt and the ground is this one here. So G and D is this one. Now for SBus, it's very important to install it in this exact same position here, which is this one right here. And the reason for that is because this is an F4, so this is an inverted pad for SBus. So this, this pad right here is specifically made for SBus. So if you put iBus here, it won't work. You have to put it here because SBus is inverted and this is an inverted pad. Now, if you're gonna be connecting iBus, so iBus, and um, what we said was the five volt and ground are gonna go in the same exact position. However, the only difference is going to be the signal. So a place where you could set up the iBus would be right here. And this is RX4 pad. So the iBus would go to any R pad. Make sure it's not the pad for the S bus because on F4 flight controllers, it does matter. So again, this is where you want to connect S bus and I bus is going to go right down here. Five volt and ground, exactly the same position as the S bus or FR sky. This is just power. This is basically just power for the device here. And the signal is just going to go in different places. And if you need more information on iBus, go ahead and search Drone Mesh how to connect uh, iBus or how to configure iBus. I go into great detail also showing you in Betafly how to set that up. So there's one more pad here that I didn't discuss, which is this one right here. Now this is slightly more advanced. This is an actual inverted F port pad, which is really nice to see. Not a lot of flight controllers do that. And it can also be used as an inverted S port pad, not S bus, S port pad. So this really nice that they've done that here. Um, so this is slightly more advanced stuff. If you know what you're doing, then you could go ahead and take full, take full advantage of this, which would I, I would actually do myself here. And uh, it's really nice to know that they've actually uh, left that there for you. So that's going to include it for the receiver part here. Let's go ahead and see what's the next step. All right, guys, and that's going to conclude it for this flight controller. It is linked down below, and I would really like to know your feedback on the new format of this video, if you guys like it, and if I should continue doing this. So make sure you let me know down in the comment section and hit that subscribe and that like button. And also come join my Patreon, where I do a ton, ton of giveaways per month, and also new Patreon. So like, for example, last month, I got two new Patreons, and actually one of them won. So I do separate giveaway, also a premium giveaway for new Patreons, so everybody has a chance to win. And my older patreons get like 10 plus uh giveaways per month and premium components and well that's it guys everything's linked down below make sure you click those those really support the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out